What's going on guys and why is the current job market such a hideous way to find a job and it's not happening? You go on LinkedIn, you go on Indeed, you go on all these platforms that have all these job posting but no one is calling you back. You guys are commenting in my section saying that you've been looking for seven months, seven years, seven years. How's that even possible? My goodness. Holy cow, seven years. Can you imagine that? Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe it was seven months. Or maybe it was just one year. But more or less, I believe you. I trust all of you guys. Some of you guys do not believe that in our sector right now, cybersecurity, people are getting laid off. It's true. It is very true. I know people that have been getting laid off. I know people that know people that have been getting laid off. And they're all doing cybersecurity. And what's worse What's the, the worst part of it all is that a lot of them who are coming straight out of college or, you know, earning a degree in cybersecurity are not getting the recognition that they're supposed to. Everyone's selling this pipe dream. You go to a university and you're learning about this and, and you, you're, you're diving deep right into cybersecurity without even knowing what an IP address is, without even knowing how to deal with certain hardware, like how to turn on a PC or how to change a toner in a printer. So I, I, I don't want to get into that, you know, whole, you know, you don't need to know hardware. You don't need to know networking in order to do cybersecurity. I do not agree with that. And there may be some individuals out there who might agree with that uh, because there are more in the GRC, the governance, risk and compliance sector of it where they don't need to have more technical knowledge, but it helps if you do, because then you know what you're actually auditing. So my point today in regards to the current job market with cybersecurity, and I know for a fact, I know firsthand because I consult and I work and I, I'm still reviewing resumes. Actually, no, I take that back. I was reviewing resumes all up until two weeks ago. And then I was informed that we're holding back. We're not hiring. So, wow. It went from full steam looking at a couple hundred resumes a day to where I am today. I'm not looking at anything because I was told not to. So that's the current market. And it is tough. Uh, I don't believe it's only in regards to cybersecurity. We are fully aware that the current situation with a lot of big branded corporations, Tesla, Google, Microsoft, they have been letting go people. And those individuals who are currently available to work are also the same people who are trying to compete to get into another you know, position. Uh, whether it's an experience level or an entry level, regardless of the case, it's an employer's advantage, meaning any corporation that's currently still hiring has the ability to choose and pick who they want right now because of the amount of individuals who are not currently working and potentially may be on the market, including yourself. Now, then you're actually competing against people who are a little more experienced or have some experience and willing to accept the salary just because they have nothing right now. So it is a tough, tough market. Uh, I, I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm hearing about it. I'm talking to individuals who are currently on that market right now. And you guys have still been rolling in as far as, in, you know, uh, contacting me, uh, you know, reviewing resumes. I, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm also scheduling calls with you guys. And it's, it's like a... It's like a whole new world, right? I want to do as much as I can for you, but at the same time, I could only do so much, right? I, it, it doesn't even matter at this point somehow, like what format you have your resume, how much chat GPT tells you to put in all this information, or you even cater yourself to the job description of the position that you're trying to apply for and have everything match up like 100%. Right. You, you qualify, you have the experience and you have everything that they're looking for and still not get a call back for an interview, which is the worst. Right. You spend all that time, you spend all that effort. This is where you put in that effort and time and you're not getting paid for it. It's as simple as that. Right. 
So how do you combat all that? How do you keep yourself motivated? How do you put yourself out there where it's going to benefit you eventually, right? So, and I and I was following this, uh, you know, Reddit forum in regards to cybersecurity is that you have to keep on learning. If this is a passion of yours, you, you have to keep on learning. You have to keep on staying on top of the news, the events, and what's going on in the whole cybersecurity world. I know it's kind of painful, right? You spend all this time, you're, you're studying, and there's also debates about, like, should I, now that I don't have a job, should I go for my master's in cybersecurity? And some of these individuals are like, well, if I can't afford it, how would I even go for it, right? If I don't have a job, how would I even uh, attempt to go for more knowledge, more education, more certifications when I can't even pay the bills? And it, it's a true reality that that's really, really hard to avoid. I mean, you have to think of the risk compared to the benefits at this point, right? Uh, you you plan on taking a more educated course, master's degree in cybersecurity, or taking the five six hundred dollar exam, or even the thousand dollar exam if you went to the red team side, like the OSCP. Or you know want to take the SISM or the SISA, like all these expensive exams. And and to be honest, like spending twelve hundred dollars or thirteen hundred dollars on a CEH exam does not guarantee you any positions or any interviews whatsoever. Yes, you know government agencies, uh, state agencies, uh, you know see CEH as a requirement. But at the same time, you have to have some kind of clearance. But I, I don't want to put that into your mind that you have to obtain more in order to land something, right? Yes, it, it, it's such a, it's ironic, right? You have to have certifications for a position because they're asking for it in order for them to consider you. But if you just have experience alone, they may not even look at you or call you in for an interview. So where do you draw the line? I would say as long as you have minimal uh, certifications, and when I say minimal, it's like you have, let's just say, CC or Security Plus or CYSA. I think CYSA is the CompTIA stuff, right? Um, and you have other certifications uh, or, you know, you've done labs where try hack me, hack the box, OSCP, um, not OSCP, but Offsex, you know, Playground or TCM. And things like that, you know, kind of adding that on top of just certifications, right? Just certification doesn't really, I feel like it's not the end all be all. It, it helps in a way. It really depends on the position and the level of look, uh, you know, the level of experience you're trying to look for to fill a position. And I would say, you know, I would choose depending on experience and what they do and their format and how they, their resume actually looks like. I possibly would probably choose someone that does not have a CISSP versus someone who does. And, you know, I, I bring them in and, they, you know, they show enthusiasm uh, and enthusiasm and they're able to explain things without trying to overthink it, uh, just simplify certain things. And but you, you get someone who possibly could have, you know, earned a CISSP, but just is is telling you explaining everything to you textbook style it's just there's a there's a huge discrepancy between a lot of that and us uh, of course soft skill comes into play a lot of the time and i would say if anything it's most of the time so i want to just bring that here is uh, you know i don't want anyone to feel like you know certifications i, I need this i need that and you start adding like 15 20 different certification and you're still not getting a job because that's not not all of it, right? Some of it has to do with your soft skills, some your communication skills. How do you show that if you don't even have the interview? Well, if you have maybe like one or two certifications, you have a history, you have to really cater your resume to showing that you're interested in cybersecurity and the position that you're applying for. Don't show me that, you know, you were a sales clerk or a salesperson at Toys R Us or, you know, you used to work at Blockbuster renting out videotapes. Like, I doesn't matter to me. I don't care about your experiences that are unrelated. I want to see things that are related, meaning your labs at home, your setup at home, your virtual machines at home, your account that you set up with 
you know, try hack me and, and you, you, you rooted this many boxes or, you know, things like that. I, I want to see how many badges you have. If you don't have the work experience, at least show all of that. How many pages, uh, well, I probably wouldn't put how many pages you read in the um, OSCP or no CISSP book, but at least you're going towards that, right? Put that down. Like you're, you're working towards your, uh, you know, you don't have the experience, but you're still reading and understanding. You put these keywords, CIA, you're putting, uh, you know, like a uh, incident response, you're putting like uh, BCP and all these things, all these abbreviations, you could put that in there. But I would say fill your resume, even if it's a single page or two pages with information that's related to the position that you're trying to apply for. And But in all honesty, you have to be truthful about it. You can't just put things because it's keywords and the AI may pick it up. I could tell you right now, a lot of companies cannot and will not put AI to scan your resume. Not everyone can afford that. They may outsource a service to do that. But I can guarantee you, I haven't been doing that. And I know a few other companies that aren't doing that. It's not all about AI. You actually get still human beings still looking at resumes and they have to attract in a way that makes sense to them because ultimately they are still recruiters. So I just want to say to all that, um, you know, I have a technical background and I look for keywords. And if I feel like this individual has some type of experience that I'm looking for, I will bring them in and I would question them beyond a little bit more just to get a feel for if they're just putting keywords on a resume or they actually know what they're talking about. So that is it for today. I want to thank everyone. I appreciate all the support and I hopefully you guys can continue coming back and I'll see you guys again really soon. Take care everyone.